The best way to understand the principles of dimensional modeling is to work through a series of tangible examples. In our instance, we're going to be looking at the retail uh, example. Uh, on the far left-hand side of the screen, you have a, a sample receipt that I picked up from the uh, Ralph Kimball Data Warehouse Toolkit book, a second edition. And uh, we're going to attempt to dissect the information available here and turn it into a star schema. <clears throat> As you can see on the receipt here, you have the name of the, the, the grocery chain. You have the location, the phone number, which store in the, in the chain that this uh, transaction was uh, generated from, the name of the cashier, as well as the ID of the cashier available. As you can see down in the further in the, on the receipt, you can see the actual products being uh, purchased here and then the amount and the, the quantity of those, those products as well. Furthermore, you'll also see the date and time as to when this transaction took place down here. So let's get into it. We're going to try to uh, attempt to essentially model this data using this receipt here. It's important to understand the dimensional modeling phase has four steps. <clears throat> The step number one, and perhaps the most important, is defining the business process. Uh, in our instance, the business wants to measure all transactions that originate at the POS uh, system and in, the, in, these, in these stores. Um, if you ever walk into a grocery chain, you'll see that the, um, the POS system is generally located towards the exit of the store, and uh, it has essentially cashiers or some, some, sometimes a self-servicing option where you can scan in your products. And, um, and generate a receipt you know, upon, upon payment. So the business wants to be able to capture individual items um, from their POS system. Step number two is to define the grain. Um, and in our instance, the business wants to be able to get to the most atomic level of this uh, receipt here, head down to the product level and, and to quantity level. And then step number three is to define the dimensions and to, you know, we'll talk a little bit more when we get there, but essentially think about, um, think about the data, right? You have facts, which are measurable measures, and then you have attributes essentially that are dimensions that describe the facts that, you know, what, when, where, how uh, of the facts, the facts being the measures, the measurements, dollar amount, quantity, things like that. And then step number three is to define the dimensions. Um, which we'll talk about in a second, and then ultimately to define the facts. So without further wait, let's get into it. Let's talk about how we're going to take this receipt and turn it into our star schema. So <clears throat> let's see what we can gather from, um, you know, so let's, let's walk through the four steps, right? Define the process. We know that we want to be able to capture all, all transactions from our POS system. So let's start there. And then essentially how far, how low do you want to get? How, what is the grain is the atomic level? We already have a receipt generated. We, are, we already have data available here. So how do we start to capture it? So right at the top of the top of this to the, the receipt here, you'll see that um, information about the chain itself is, is located. So what are some of the attributes we can capture there? So you'll see the name of the, the chain, the location, and as well as the store number, right? So in our instance, we can start with the store key, um, <clears throat> chain name as an example, uh, store number as another attribute, and so on and so forth. Like all the described, you know, the the locate you know, the address of the chain itself or the store, uh, phone number. All of those are are dimensional attributes that you can put in this uh, dimension table. And then as you, as you go along further, you'll see that um, you, you have more information about the products themselves. You have the, um, so always every table has to have a key. So you'll start with product key. And then in this instance, this is gonna be your PK. And similarly here for store key, this is gonna be your primary key here. <clears throat> and so what can we capture about the products themselves so product name given right we have on the left hand side you can see the receipt you have baked well multigrain muffins you have diet coca-cola you have sparkly toothpaste you have soy milk so those are all product names um, along with that you could probably have like product category right at this even though it's not displayed on the receipt um, It'll, it's more than likely that the POS system will give you that information so you can have that along with um, 
you know any kind of any kind of other information that that's available in the system that that you know the system provides related to the product will be captured in the product dimension here so <clears throat> furthermore as you can see here diet coca-cola you have some some promotions going on here so if you if you package you know save 50% or 50 cents off a $5.49 uh, uh, $5 cents worth of purchase. So there's a promotional aspect to this to sale here. So we can add more information into our product uh, promotion dim dimension. So you'll have something like promo key. And this is going to be the primary key of this table. And then you have more information about, you know, promo name, uh, promo details as an example promo terms you, you'll say maybe um, and so on and so forth and then ultimately down here you have the date and time of this transaction so you'll come over here we have a date dimension already kind of prepared the outline of it and we'll have again start with date key as the primary key and then you have like you know attributes broken out by um, day you know you can do day month year um, and then you can have you know uh, further items about the data cell like the fiscal calendar um, fiscal year um, quarter um, forgot the time all that stuff can be captured in um, your date dimension <clears throat> now that you have a good structure from a dimensional perspective now it's time to ultimately move on to step number four, which is to define the facts. So as you can see here, the receipt captures some measurable items on the right hand side here. So let's talk about how do we capture these items in our fact table. So first, first and foremost, uh, in order to describe a measure or describe a measurable value, you have to be able to look up the attribute or the dimensional attributes of it. So you got to be able to create a link from your fact table to one of your dimension tables. So using a foreign key. So for example, let's start with date. So you'll have the same date key populated in the fact table, but over here, it'll act as the foreign key. And then similarly, you want the product also product key to link to your product table you want the store key to be able to look up store information. And then you want promotion, promo key, to be able to look up, look up what kind of promo was going on around that same time period or, or when the transaction took place. Um, <clears throat> and then now we, we talk about the actual, some of the measurable facts or, or, you know, measurable items that you can sum up and create reports off of. Um, sometimes these are attributes or, or facts that you necessarily don't add up or sum, but they just still, you know, numerical uh, figures that can probably be put into your transaction table. Things like POS transaction number. And in our receipt, I think that's probably down here. This value here is our transaction number. The sales quantity. Item count, four. We have four, four uh, products being purchased, so that's four here. <clears throat> so the sales dollar amount. In total, we have twelve dollars sixty-seven cents. But you know, if you want the fact table to be at the grain of the product itself, you'll score two, you know, two fifty as a, as a line item, four ninety-nine as a line item, uh, one ninety-nine as a line item, three nineteen as a line item, and then you can sum them up and, and uh, uh, at the transaction level, um, and then see uh, what the total was for that particular receipt. And sometimes even though this item, next item is, is not displayed here um, on the receipt, but you know, the POS system will pass you something like cost dollar amount. And you can store that here as well. And then ultimately gross profit dollar amount can also be put in here as well. These are all items that are, uh, the last couple of items are not probably displayed on the receipt here, but you can, you can build that into the fact table if you're, POS system has that data available. 
So now that you have <coughs> your, uh, your, your dimension tables and fact tables, uh, fact table rather, uh, defined, you can see that the date key will join to date key in the, in the transaction fact, the product key will join to product key in the dimension table, store will join to store key, and then promo will join to promo key, and now you're able to slice and dice your data with any, um, any of these dimensions. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and uh, please don't uh, forget to subscribe and like this video.